Welcome to the Great Smoky Mountains, a place that tells an incredible story of Earth's ancient past. Today, it is one of the most biodiverse places on Earth, covered in misty forests, hidden trails, and breathtaking mountainscapes. But it has gone through some massive transformations to get to where it is now, and it's had a bit of an identity crisis, if you will. The area has been part of oceans, glaciers, supercontinents, and an absolutely massive mountain range that would make today's Smokies look absolutely tiny. So put on your time-traveling hiking boots because we are going to unravel the mystery of how the Great Smoky Mountains came to be what it is today. And in case you were wondering, yes, there will be salamanders, lots and lots of cute little salamanders. To really get to know these mountains, we need to rewind back 750 million years. Imagine yourself as a tiny ocean creature at this time, maybe a trilobite, which is, think of basically a horseshoe crab with a really cool helmet. Now, technically speaking, trilobites didn't appear until 520 million years ago, but 750 million years ago, most multicellular plant life was just algae. And who wants to pretend they're algae? So let's be trilobites. Okay, anyway, go ahead and grab your popcorn because you are about to watch the tectonic plates go through some serious relationship drama. You see, at this time, most of the world was formed in a massive supercontinent known as not Pangaea, but Rodinia. I didn't know this, but there have actually been several supercontinents that have formed and broken up over time in Earth's history. I think we just talk about Pangaea the most because, well, dinosaurs are cool. But Rodinia was a thing, and it came long before Pangaea did. Anyway, at this time, the plates have decided to break up. So they are pulling apart, breaking apart Rodinia, convinced that their love can never be. This separation opens up new lowlands and creates small oceans. This means that at this time, in Great Smoky Mountains National Park, there was no mountain range, but instead there was just an ocean. More specifically, there was a warm, shallow basin that stretched for miles. Over time, rivers and streams carried a ton of sediment into this basin, eventually forming thick layers of rock that would form the core of the Smokies. Then came the plot twist, the plates decided to get back together. Around 300 million years ago, they realized they could be apart no longer, and so they began forming the familiar supercontinent Pangaea. And with this collision came the formation of mountains. Some might say it was a monument to their love. These mountains were absolutely massive, way taller than today's Smokies, and also way taller than the Rockies out in the West. This was the dawn of the Appalachians, a mountain chain that would evolve over hundreds of millions of years. But alas, the continental love did not last, because 240 million years ago, the plates began pulling apart again, marking the breakup of Pangaea. Anyway, that's enough relationship drama, let's fast forward through millions and millions of years of erosion until we land about 10,000 years in the past, right at the end of the last ice age. By this point, our mammoth-sized mountains have eroded into much smaller ones, much more like the Appalachians that we see and love today. During the last ice age, the landscape around the Smokies was actually dominated by glaciers, but at this time 10,000 years ago, these glaciers are disappearing. So imagine standing on a ridge, watching the glaciers retreat into the distance over the years. The air is getting warmer, plants and animals are returning, and over the centuries, the Smokies grow into the lush, biodiverse paradise that they are today. Today, this park is home to some surprising, fascinating, and adorable characters. For example, I promised you cute salamanders, so here you go. These misty hills host over 30 different species of salamander, some found nowhere else on Earth. In fact, the Smokies are called the salamander capital of the world, which is a weird flex, but it's still a flex and I'm here for it. Fun facts about salamanders, they can regenerate their limbs, they don't have vocal cords, and some species can breathe through their skin. Don't ask me how. Then there's the plant life. In the Smokies, you'll find one of the largest old growth forests in the eastern United States. Some trees here are as old as 500 years, and there are also 4,000 different species of plants here, which is, well, a lot. But of course, let's not forget about the smoky part of the Great Smoky Mountains. The early morning fog is one of the most beautiful aspects of this place. 
The Cherokee Indians called it Shikanahe, which means land of blue smoke. And this mist isn't just a dense fog. It's a mix of organic compounds released by the dense vegetation, creating those iconic blue-gray wisps. So technically, the trees are giving off their own mist, kind of like a forest-powered fog machine. So now you might be asking, how did Great Smoky Mountains National Park come to be? Well, in the 1920s, the area was almost destroyed by logging. But thanks to a huge conservation effort and some early eco-warriors, the park was officially established in 1934. Today, it is one of the most visited national parks in the United States, drawing more than 12 million visitors every single year. And I mean, I could say that the gorgeous hiking trails, the wildflowers, the abundant wildlife, and just sheer beauty of this place probably has something to do with it. If you want to learn more about the national parks, go ahead and check out my national parks playlist. I actually have a ton of videos telling the stories of a whole bunch of different parks. So I'll put that playlist up right here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.